Hey folks, uh, welcome to my Red Sea Reaper 250. Uh, I've never really done a good update on this tank. Uh, it's been running since, oh, I don't know, June-ish, late June, maybe early July 2017. Uh, pretty much everything was grown out from very small, small frags. Um, you know, maybe one or two pieces that were two inch frags versus a one inch frag. But um, yeah, so let's kind of get the update rolling. Uh, we had a blizzard yesterday in Massachusetts, so I spent the better part of five or six hours stuck indoors with my uh, with my arms in the tank. Uh, first, we took the uh, crown leather that you see front and center. That had been over on the left-hand side, tucked between the green Monty cap and the hammer. It was, uh, it was pretty constricted space-wise in there and uh, hopefully moved out front you know, in a, in a space that uh, has more space for it to open up. I think it'll do much better there. Uh, we also, um, the top right corner uh, to the left of the red money cap, uh, I had a bird's nest colony. Uh, the bird's nest colony you see on the far left in the frag rack now. Um, it was shading out that money cap. The money cap was starting to bleach in spots. And the orange digi that's now up there was tucked in behind the purple digi so you couldn't even really see it unless you were up close and personal so uh, move the bird's nest move the digi up and uh, once that money cap colors back up I think it'll be pretty cool uh, pretty cool to see the cap you know uh, plating out and the, the digi kind of branching above it um, top right back corner is a I'm not even sure what it is it's an SPS of some sort um, it's a little brown right now, and uh, I think where it is, it's not quite getting enough light, so I'm going to have to do something with it, but it's growing. It's just more of a purpley brown than green. Uh, let's see. Uh, put the eight cans down in the bottom right corner there. Um, they had both just been sitting on the frag, back for frag rack for a while because I didn't know where to put them. Um, they look pretty darn happy in their new spot. Fat, plump. Uh, let's see, what else did we do yesterday? Um, uh, a couple of euphelia down on the sand bed to the left of the middle of the tank. Uh, one's a gold torch, one is a green frog spawn with like a glowing green center. Pretty cool piece. That had been kind of tucked up in the back left underneath the frag rock shelf there. I uh, wasn't getting too, too much light. It's on the sand bed for now. Kind of get it accustomed to getting light again, and we'll see what we do with that in the future. Um, I do have an 18 gallon tank here that I was going to set up for Rico's Nano Challenge, but life got in the way. I got busy and just didn't get a chance to get it going in time. So it may wind up in there. The gold torch may wind up in there as well. Um, and there's a purple torch kind of behind those two pieces. You don't can't really see it, but. That might also end up in the little 18 gallon here. Uh, let's see, what else did we do? Uh, fragged up a couple pieces, uh, removed some accidental frags from the sand bed. But uh, up here on the frag rack, let's try to zoom in here. I'm sorry, I'm not very video savvy, so. There's a sunset money there that the color doesn't show up very well on camera, but it's it's beautiful, beautiful pink skin and orange green polyps. Uh, starting to grow over uh, a couple pieces up there, but first and foremost was the uh, I think it's a red planet. Uh, try to get the zoom in a little more here. Starting to grow over that red planet there. You can see the left half of the red planet's bleached out. Um, so I did cut a couple of good sized frags off the right hand side of it and the back side of it. I got them in the frag rack now, hoping to save some of them. Uh, it's also growing over this piece here in the back. Um, I'll probably snip that at some point and get it out of there. Um, got a couple zoas there, just kind of not quite sure what I'm doing with. There's a media shower over on the left side of that rack that's just growing over. Uh, growing over the shelf. Uh, another piece of SPS there that the Monty's starting to grow over. 
There's also another sand dollar Monty there that's growing up off the rack onto the back glass. So I may just let the Monty's kind of take over this, this frag rack and kind of make it a, uh, instead of having it used as a frag rack, just make it kind of part of the rock structure and one big giant Monty coral. Uh, oop, my finger over the lens. A couple more SPS pieces here in the frag rack. Uh, not sure where those will end up, but they're doing just fine where they are for now. There's some of those additional accidental frags I mentioned of the, the purple digi. Every time I reach my hand in there to move something or grab a coral off the sand bed, I end up breaking another piece off. And uh, also a small little couple heads of Duncan up there. I think a lot of this will end up in that 18 gallon I mentioned. Um, but we'll see where that goes. Otherwise, things are doing pretty well. Uh, tank's not quite two years old. Let's get a couple of additional close-ups here. And again, apologies for my camera work. I am no, no cameraman. There's the gold torch, the purple torch, and that frog spawn I mentioned. We'll figure out what to do with them. And uh, yeah, so we'll take a, uh, there's that leather, small piece of parcel of four I tucked in there behind the eight cans. And there's kind of a closer look at the bleaching that the uh, bird's nest was causing on the money cap. Got a green piece of SPS in here. I think it's, uh, I think it's an ATL Shades of Fall maybe. And of course, the green bubble tip anemone. Uh, loves that spot. Hasn't moved in probably 16 months. Dropped him in the tank. Uh, he moved over there within a day and hasn't moved since. And then on the top of that middle rock structure, it's kind of a pink Millie. Um, color's pretty dang good, but I don't get a ton of growth out of it. I just recently turned the intensity of my lights down, hoping that maybe it would respond. Uh, I am running the, ooh, let's see if I can get up there. Probably not from this angle. But I did put an Orphic V4 fixture on this tank about, I'm going to say sometime in November. Um, and all the corals are loving it. So, yeah, and that's it. We'll take a quick look at the sump. Not much going on down here. It's pretty cut and dry. Just a standard Red Sea sump. Standard Red Sea sump, j -Bow docent pump, docent containers, um, docent triton, other methods. Um, still doing water changes, maybe every three months or so, just because I feel like it can't hurt. I got the NIOS 120 skimmer in there and uh, one kind of big hunk of live rock and that's it. That's all that's down there. Um, yeah, you know, carbon dosing, uh, I do three mils of, of no pox. Uh, two, maybe three days a week. More as I remember. It's not uh, automated by any means. And uh, it keeps my nitrates right around five parts per million. And, uh, Phosphates usually range around 0.06 to 0.10, somewhere in there. And everything price stays pretty dang happy. So that's it, people. Uh, I'm going to try and do these updates a little more regularly, monthly. But I uh, figured it was time to start doing some sort of regular updates. Thanks. Thanks for watching if you're still here. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. Bye.